Okay, we're going to turn to the latest on the urgent manhunt for a suspect in the murder of those four college students in Idaho. Police now say all four victims may have been asleep at the time of the attack. Kena Whitworth is there for us in Moscow, Idaho with more. Good morning, Kena. Yeah, Robin, good morning. Authorities tell me the other two roommates who survived were also likely asleep, but that they were in the basement. And when they woke up, they thought a roommate had passed out, initially calling friends over who discovered a much more sinister scene. This morning, police in Moscow, Idaho, revealing for the first time that before a 911 call was made, the two surviving roommates of a deadly rampage that killed four students summoned friends to the off-campus home, telling authorities they thought someone on the second floor had, quote, passed out and was not waking up. What I do know is that they woke up later in the morning. They recognized that something was amiss as far as they believed that the roommate uh, wouldn't, wouldn't wake up. They called some friends. The friends came over. They called 911, and that's when the officers arrived. Police say multiple people spoke with the 911 dispatcher before an officer arrived. You have victims with multiple stab wounds. How does that translate to my roommates passed out and won't wake up? So I haven't seen the scene, and I'm not exactly sure what they saw in the morning. But what we believe we know is that when they woke up, they believed that the roommate was still passed out, wasn't, wasn't responding. And they was it responding to what? I'm not sure. Detectives do not believe anyone at the scene was involved in the crime. This TikTok from inside the home showing all of the roommates together just weeks before. The survivors' faces blurred because police haven't released their identities yet. As the search for the killer intensifies, authorities say they're targeting certain neighborhoods looking for surveillance video and any new evidence. We're looking everywhere. Frantic for answers, Kernadal's brother going door to door with flyers asking neighbors to search their properties. This is a horrible thing that's happened and somebody needs to be brought to justice. Meanwhile, Gonzalez's sister has been poring over phone records saying Kaylee made several calls to her longtime boyfriend the night she was killed. The calls went unanswered between 226 and 252 a.m. I know for an absolute fact that he is not a suspect. He's not suspicious. He is 100% innocent in this. And this morning, police confirming he is not a suspect, but they're still asking this tight knit community for information. And right now, authorities have conducted 90 interviews. They're chasing over 700 leads. But of course, all of this is happening, Robin, as Ethan's family is laying him to rest today. All right, Kena, thank you so much. We're going to bring in a ABC News contributor, former FBI agent Brad Garrett. And Brad, um, we heard in Kena's report, the, the police releasing those chilling new details. Two victims mm -hmm. were on the second floor, two on the third floor. All four are now believed to have been asleep at the time. The two roommates that were in the house in the basement. Uh, what, what does all this tell you, Brad? So it tells me that someone came into the house with a comfort level, that they probably knew the layout of the house. Uh, and I, I tell you, what's, what this new information, Robin, really sort of changes my analysis or profile of maybe who did this. And the reason why is that if you have basically four people killed on two different floors and the roommates go up and really don't realize that they've been stabbed, does that mean that the killer is actually staged? Did he cover them up in such a way that they didn't see the blood? And so as a result, is this a person maybe a little older? Think about how much time it would take to go to four different people and to kill them in the manner in which they were killed. So uh, what bothers me is that the circle of people that may have committed this, you may have to make bigger. You obviously look for people close to the victims initially, and that's absolutely correct. But my, my sense might be that this is somebody that's really not in their inner circle, but we'll have to see. Okay, so you're shifting your analysis. Do you think, even though the police have stressed that this is ongoing, it's going to take some time, uh, how are they shifting the investigation, do you think, based on this new information? Well, I would hope they're shifting it to looking at uh, after moving beyond immediate contacts, in other words, other, other college students, basically, boyfriends, girlfriends, etc., is that who else do they have relationships with? People, you know, adults on campus, people in the community, 
because you're going to actually have to start spreading out to people that they may have had just a casual relationship with. Because this person didn't just show up in this house and commit this act. He went there to do specifically what he had done. And, and it's, it's so clear to me that he really knew what he was doing, just based on the time alone, as I mentioned to you earlier. All right, Brad Garrett, thank you. I know we'll be checking back with you from, from time to time, and hopefully they do have some solid leads because the families of those four victims can only imagine what they're going through right now. Brad, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.